Brian. Jason. And this is Perfectly Screwed Podcast. <laughs> like that. Gave him a a almost, almost an arrow. <laughs> Not quite. Oh, God damn. So, <laughs> before we start, I wanted to tell you something that a little Karen story. I think you'll like this one. We didn't do a Karen story last episode, so I wanted to throw out a Karen story for you, Jason. Let's have it. Okay, this lady was in a store. Okay, she's wearing clearly street clothes. Okay, well, she sees a teacher she used to have in high school, an elderly lady. So she goes up to the teacher, and she's helping her with her groceries, helping her get things in the basket, helping her up front to check her out, right? So they're standing in line waiting to go through the to the manager to check out this old elderly lady's items. So this other woman comes up who's the Karen. And, of course, she walks right up to this lady and goes, um, since you're done helping her now, you can help me find something. And she goes... Ma'am, I don't work here. Now, clearly, she didn't work there. Right. Because she's wearing street clothes. Okay. Secondly, she's not done helping the woman she was helping. Because they're in line waiting to be checked out. And she's clearly carrying the old ladies, you know, one of those shopping bag, cart, handle, basket things. Yeah. She's helping the old ladies. She's still got the basket in her hand. So clearly, A, she's not done helping this woman, even if she did work there. And B, she's wearing street clothes. Right. So she goes, ma'am, I don't work here. And the lady goes, well, yeah, but you seem to know this store really well, so you can just help me. And she said, what? What? <laughs> yeah. Just randomly accosted some woman in the store. Well, you're going to help me. Where did you see this at? It was on the fucking Reddit thing. Wow. Yeah. Just was so entitled. You're going to help me. You're going to help me. Damn. So the teacher turns around and she says, ma'am, she is not helping you. You can go over there and wait in line until one of the people that work here can help you. Because she's helping me right now. <laughs> and turned back around. The lady just walked off all huffy and shit. But uh, yeah, the, the, the goal. The audacity of Damn. some of these fucking people. Well, you know the store, so you can uh, Bitch, fuck you. Yeah, man, that's the type of thing that gets a bitch slapped. Yeah, what kind of fucking shit is that? Dude, how do you have the nerve to walk up to somebody randomly and say, well, you know the store, so you can help me? I don't know where what? people get this entitlement from, to be honest with you, man. It's crazy. I really... It's middle-class rich white bitches. That's the ones. Yeah. Yeah. Because their husbands work. Even not rich. And they don't have to work. And they're just entitled that they think that the world should bow down and kiss their white preppy ass. It's gotten to the point where the rich ones have now infected the ones that aren't rich. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Like, I know. Like, the ones that aren't rich, they portray themselves as rich on social media. Yeah. Yeah. But they still carry around this sense of entitlement, man. Yeah. That's they crazy. still think they're entitled yes. to this. Well... It's gotten even worse at other places. Like, I was reading another story, and this flabbergasted me, too. So this guy calls a pizza place. Now, they wouldn't tell what pizza place it was, but he said it was a popular pizza chain. So he calls them and tries to order a pizza. They tell him that we don't take orders over the phone anymore. You have to do it on the app. So he got online on their app and ordered his pizza. Then he went to the pizza place himself for carryout, got to the pizza place, and asked them to receive his pizza. They looked at him and had the nerve to say to him, would you like to tip 20% to us? And he goes, for what? Right. And they said, for our service. And he said, what service did you provide? Doing your job? I yeah. Can't, like, you didn't have to answer the phone. And they got shitty about it. You didn't have to bring me the pizza. Right. Thank you for cooking it. Yeah, well, you your could, job? Like, if it's 1983, you can, here's a 20, you can keep the change. Right. No, they wanted a 20% tip. That's. For doing their jobs. Wow. Look, bitch, I'm not tipping you because you're already paid. Yeah, if you want tip, go to serve. Yeah, you tip for service. You don't tip just because you did what you're supposed to be doing. Right. 
Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. What? Like in that method, we should all be getting 10, 20 percent from you know going to work. Yeah. That'd be nice. I went to work today. Want to tip me twenty percent just for coming? Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. Let right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got you got my twenty percent tip, right? Yeah. Right. And I hand it right back to you. Right. There you go. <laughs> I said the entitlement of some of these yeah, motherfuckers. Dude. Jesus. It's crazy. You want a tip for fucking doing your regular job, bitch? Fuck off. What for bringing me up at the register? Right. I'm sorry you had to push three buttons, guy. And I mean, if you're not making enough, you know there are other jobs out there, homie. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, if you want to get tip, that's fine. Go, go get yeah, be a job, server. Get a job where they tip. Right, you. or be a driver. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Right. You know. I mean, Jesus. Tip right. for working the register. Right. Answer the fucking phone. <laughs> what the fuck? You didn't you're even take this order. More. You're yeah. gonna do something more, right? Right. Right. Well, now at restaurants, they're also here's another one. They're charging for the health care of the employees. Did you hear about this? They're charging who? The, the, the customer. Really? Yeah. A lady went to a restaurant. Again, they won't tell what restaurant. But she went to a restaurant, sat down, had dinner. So they bring her the bill. And, you know, the tip was on there and everything like you would normally see. And at the bottom, it said, employee health care coverage, five <laughs> And it not only charged her, it charged everyone that ordered at the table five extra dollars to pay for the employee's health care. Wow. Because, you know, now, because of the government laws that they enacted a few years ago during COVID, all companies that have 20 or more employees have to cover health care for their employees. They can't get away with not having employee health care. Well, because of this, the companies don't want to foot the bill, so right. now they're charging the customer out, yeah. for the employee's health care. hiding it in the fine print. Yeah, right? hiding it. Yeah, some of them don't even say it. They just say surcharge and don't tell you what it is. Yeah. Yeah, fuck you. All right? Wow. Look, if you want employees, it's your job to pay for their health care, not mine. All right? If you want to charge more for the meal... And then Dude, take that is, money to the healthcare. Hey, that's your business. It's scary because, just like you said, you talked about uh, on the last episode, I think it was, um, about the fair tax. Yeah. Dude, it's a slippery slope, man, because what you're saying is, and obviously, if they have to carry health coverage, more restaurants are doing this probably than you know about. Right. And, and more are going to follow. Right. They're going to have to charge you more to cover the health care that they now have to put on their employees, which is going to drive business down. People are going to stop going to a lot of these places because they don't want to pay that extra money for the... It's going to cause so many problems, man. Well, this is my point. If you want to charge more for the product, okay. If you want to say now a steak is $5 more because we got to cover employee health care... That's whatever. But don't put it as a separate charge on the bottom of my bill just to smack me in the ass with it. Right. Right. Don't add it and then tell me what it is. Just add it to the price of the meal, motherfucker. Well, right. And, like, yeah, I mean, like you just said, I'm perfectly okay with paying a little extra, but, I mean, I better right. get a little something extra. Right. And don't sit there and put it on the bottom where I can read what I'm paying for so it, it's like, fuck you. Don't, yeah, don't just yeah. throw an, don't just say, hey, I need an extra $5. Yeah. To pay for Sally's fucking. <laughs> yeah. They don't care. Fucking appendix bursting. No, right. Yeah. No, that's on you. Yeah. Okay? Like, that's not on you. Yeah, okay, I'll pay you five extra dollars. I mean, bring me a fucking little bit bigger steak. Or, yeah. Some extra fries or... Or, you know, free rolls. Right. How <laughs> that? Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Give me something for that extra five bucks. But yeah, because you, you can see, yeah, you can definitely see how this is a problem. Yeah. Gonna be a problem. Right. I don't want to pay for their health care. That's your business. Right. You should pay for their health care, which you should anyways, really. Absolutely. I mean, as an employer, you should be paying for health care. Or better yet, maybe, and just maybe, I mean, I'm just putting it out there, Maybe doctors shouldn't charge you $5,000 to see you for 10 minutes. Maybe health care should be a little more affordable. Right. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know. That maybe insurance, should alleviate some problems. Right. Maybe insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies shouldn't have jacked up the health care prices in the 80s. Maybe. But just, just put it out there. Just You can just start to kind of put the puzzle together, though, yeah. how this capitalist regime is going to come crashing <laughs> down. 
and it's going to be on our fucking heads, not theirs. Well, I've said it before, and I know that that's not, this isn't a, a popular opinion, but socialism works much better. It does. Pure socialism works much better than capitalism or communism. It seems like it's more sustainable. Yeah. Sweden don't seem to have too many problems. Canada's doing just fine. You know, France is not too bad. It's just that, like, here, <clears throat> it's just that in a place here, like America, like now, it took, to make that switch well, would be I mean, fucking war. Actually, it's not that hard because we're right on the path to it anyway. Well, I, I think that's what they're <clears throat> I mean, kind of working towards yeah. gradually yeah. bringing it along instead of having a Hitler come in and saying, this is what it is. Well, this is the problem. Well, Nazi, well, Nazis weren't really socialists. That was a dictatorship. Yeah, they were. I mean, they were a just, socialist. They were, I don't think they really fucking knew what they no, were, actually. No. They a were socialist just, government actually takes care of their people. <laughs> Nazis it's were almost, just. It's almost like they were, like, the challenge was to get into power. Yeah. Not really knowing what. The plan was, and then yeah. once they were in power and could make all the rules, it's like, ah, we'll just do what we want. Yeah, we'll just, we'll do just see how it goes. We'll just see how it goes. <laughs> we'll just do whatever we do. Right. Because Nazism, and we are talking about Nazis again today. This is part three of our uh, series on Nazis and Hitler and all of that. So... Nazis were more of a dictatorship, though. Oh, yeah. Because he didn't really... 100%. He didn't really say, okay, we're going to give you free health care and all of this, and you're going to give us some money, but we're going to take care of you. He said, you're going to do whatever the fuck we tell you. We're going to kill you. Or we're going to kill you. Yeah. That's not really socialism. That's more of... <laughs> yeah, that's... That's Saddam Hussein rule. That's, that's well, dictators. That's, that's, that's the word, dictatorship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Korea. So, you know, it's, it's North Korea. Not good. Right, yeah. That does not work out at all. No. 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 It's kind of why England uh, went away from a dictatorship years ago, and so did every other country, because they don't work. Because mm -hmm. one, I mean, you, you get one monarch, and yeah, he's, you know, good. He's a good monarch. He helps the people, does everything. But then you got this next guy, and he's a fucking psychopath. Well, you, you're, you can't put power in one individual. Right, like, no. That's just crazy. No, if you give one individual too much power, then what happens is, you know... You end up living under the rules of one individual. Right, and their and, whims. And, 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 right, and like, is he having a good day today? Is he having a bad day today? Right. You know, did he get dick sucked last night? Did he get turned down? Because my life is literally going to be affected on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, what was we, uh... What are we talking about today? Well, we're going to talk about, again, like I said, we're going to go back into uh, the Nazis. And we're going to talk more about, uh, like I said on the last episode, more of the paranormal aspects and some of the things they did. So to start off, let's talk about uh, seven, seven paranormal experiments. Um, experiments? Experiments. Okay. Uh, involving Nazis and other governments. Like, did you know that Hitler and the Nazis were obsessed with witchcraft? Oh, I did not. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, they, uh, Hitler, actually, Nazism, it's interesting, the Nazis is what brought occult religion and occult beliefs into mainstream for a lot of people. See, because before okay. this, there was witchcraft and this and that. A but cult meaning hidden. Hidden, yep. yes. But it bring the psychic elements and all of this. That's why the psychic boom happened in the 30s in Germany, the United States. A lot of this had to do with the Nazis. And the psychic boom was happening here in the 30s and the 20s. And people were getting into mysticism and psychics and occultism. And Hitler just kind of jumped on that bandwagon. Of course, he was trying to use it for war purposes. Well, basically, enough time had passed where they weren't fucking burning witches at the stake and drowning them and fucking... There was m more people were living longer to <clears throat> practice it, basically. Well, well, see, again, Hitler, even though he was completely insane and did all these unspeakable acts... He was also big into trying to 
experiment scientifically with people's minds. Right. Again, he was doing this to try to win the war. He was doing this as a means to further his dictatorship. Because <clears throat> he figured that if he could tap into psychic abilities, it would give him an edge over the people he was fighting. Which, of course, it would. Right. Right. Yeah. If well, he could tap into mind control, yep. he wouldn't have to win the war but with tanks and guns and this and that. He could just control people's minds... And then, so they did a lot of very inhuman experimentation. It's also like an ongoing thing to continue to try to basically brainwash people into Nazism. Right. Like, he was like a king of propaganda. Right. You know? Right. right. Yeah. And if you can control their minds... You got them. You got them. Right. So, he was big into witchcraft. Um, they had a, Nazis had a deep interest in the occult and paranormal practices. Um, Heinrich Heimler, one of Hitler's right-hand men, was a ardent, ardent, okay, if you're playing the drinking game. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that wasn't even a word. Well, oh, God. Now that I know that the word's ardent, I don't yeah. even know how you had agate. I don't even know where you're <laughs> going with that. No. I thought maybe you were trying to say aggravate. <laughs> if you're playing. Agriculture. We have a game here. Agnostic. Never in the world did I think you were going ardent. <laughs> yeah, I don't ardent? know what happened there. I don't either. I my my mind control. control. Yeah. You just got mind control. Oh, God. We have a drinking game here on the Perfectly Screwed Podcast. If I fuck up a word like I just did or don't even say a word. <laughs> he, he just says a noise. <laughs> <laughs> Please feel free to take a shot at that point. <laughs> so that's the first shot of many that you will be taking today. Very I'm sure because we're, we're, Jesus Christ. It's a long, it's a long day here. Oh. The perfectly good podcast. I did. I, how do you fuck up the word ardent and just go ag? Like I said, I'm over here. You made the, the, the noise ag. <laughs> ardent never even crossed my mind. It was, there's you not even both start with a. I'll give you that. There's not even a G in the word. No, <laughs> not even close. Not even close. That wasn't even okay. He was an or an H. No. <laughs> no, there isn't. It's great. Oh, uh, so Heinrich Himmler. Oh, I fucked up those words too because I didn't say his name right. It's Heinrich Himmler is the guy, and he was one of Hitler's right hand men, and he was an ardent believer in black magic. He followed um, <clears throat> many evil ritualistic traditions, which included necromancy. Which, try, if anybody doesn't know, necromancy is trying to raise the dead. Okay. He also uh, involved himself in ancient German paganism. According to reports, Heimler's ordered the SS officers to ransack museums in Poland, Ukraine, and uh, Kramaria looking for any mystical or ancient pagan texts that he could use to experiment on people. Did they... Did they uh... I wonder, did they practice, like, what Crowley practiced? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. He was a big studier of Crowley. Okay, I, th I thought he was. Yeah. Um, the next one we're going to talk about now, or, well, the first one, is, of course, and you know this one, Project Stargate. Okay. Now, you know what Project Stargate was, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It involved a number of investigations into the paranormal by the CIA and the Nazis, and partner organizations such as the DIA and INSECOM. Um, there are records of remote viewing sessions with Skimple. Skimple. Skimple? They're shot number two, ladies and gentlemen. Simple sketches and graphics. So, <clears throat> Project Stargate. So, is that like remote viewers? Yes. Okay. Yes, Project Stargate was uh, started by the Nazi Party and then taken over by the CIA much later. And it was tests, basically experimentation, into uh, trying to get people to see things and do sketches of things in another room. They would have... Um, Remote <clears throat> Yeah. What yeah. it's referred to now. You know what's funny? 
Do you know? <laughs> this is actually quite humorous. Do you know the people that the Nazis were doing this with? Like the people they were using? Uh-huh. As the remote viewers? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Jews. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. They were, they were apprehending these Jews, right? And they were using them to try to experiment to see if they could get a psychic reaction from right. them. And it's like, okay, you hate this culture so much that you want to kill and eliminate all of them, but you want to use some of them as tools to win a war right. where you plan on killing all of them. You're going to trust one of them right? to basically tell you what's happening in a place that's however many miles away. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Smart. To win a war Makes sense. where at the end of the war you're planning on exterminating them. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they're going to help you. I mean, they would never, ever lie to you or do anything to deceive you at that point. Right. I mean, obviously, they're an outstanding people. I mean, you know, just because you're trying to eliminate well, them. the beauty of uh, the gas chamber, though, you know, when you're feeding <laughs> feeding them in the gas chamber like you're cooking cookies. Yeah. You, you know, people start to come around a little bit. You know, if you give it, if they give you a chance to be a remote viewer, I'm guessing they're probably going to try to do the best that they possibly can for you, seeing how they don't want to be next to the turkey on Thanksgiving being <laughs> shoved into a fucking oven. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it just yeah. Well, a lot, yeah, a lot about it just doesn't make sense. I guess if you had the option to. Be one of Hitler's psychic Jews, and he tells you, hey, if you help us win the war, you're going to be one of the ones we keep safe. We're not going to kill you. Now, you're not going to live in society with the rest of us. We're going to keep you in camps, but... You're going to breathe. But you're going to breathe and be alive, right? Unlike the rest of these, which we're putting in the gas chamber. <laughs> right. You see that line over there? Yeah. 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 So... That line doesn't end well. Right. If you help us win the war, though... We got you. Right, right, right. We got you. So, <laughs> one of Hitler's uh, clairvoyants was a Jewish psychic. Um, in the weeks leading up to Adolf Hitler's appointment as uh, Reich Chancellor on January 30, 1933, um, there was nothing inevitable about the Austrian corporal's ascension to power. Results of the 1932 November Reichstag elections were disappointing for the National National Socialist Party. With the Nazis suffering losses in the German parliament while retaining about a third of the seats there, Nazi coffers had been drained dry by the campaign, Hitler had endured significant defections from his movement, and threatened suicide. Some Nazis began to wonder if he was the right stuff to be their Fuhrer. Ooh. So it was at this point that Hitler, falling back on his belief in the occult, called one of the most renowned clairvoyants in the land to his headquarters at the Hotel Kaiserhof in Berlin for a private session. The man Hitler met with that day is uh, the subject of a very recent biography. His um, name was Eric Jan Husson. And he was Hitler's Jewish clairvoyant. Wow. Husan, 43 at the time, um, went to the hotel. And he was a man whose name was synonymous with psychic phenomena in Central Europe. He was born in Vienna. And now, he was Vienna born and he was a con man to start with. Okay, let's, let's get that right out there. But he was also a celebrity and a seer that was known for predicting the future, casting uh, horoscopes, and astounding audiences with his feats of mysticism and mind reading. Ooh. So, a mentalist. A mentalist, yes. He was basically a mentalist. <clears throat> so, in Berlin, Husan was a rock star before there were rock stars, with a vast business empire trading on various German hungers for all things paranormal. Hitler became one of his followers when, in March of 1932, the psychic's own weekly newspaper um, printed the startling prophecy that within one year's time, the future Fuhrer 
would become Rensan's chancellor. Most Berlin scoffed at this. For many, Hitler was a megalomaniacal clown at the time. So he predicted in 1932 that Hitler would become chancellor. Hmm. Way before Hitler became right. chancellor. So was he a con man? I don't know. Sounds pretty reliable so far, guys. I mean, one for one and yeah. right now. Right. But uh, if the average German person thought that Hussan's predictions were absurd, Hitler certainly did not. Uh, the Nazi leader, when Hussan came to him that day, was filled with dreaded anticipation and kept the meeting secret in case the results would be negative. So Hussan placed Hitler on a seat in the middle of the room, examined his hands, counted the bumps on his head. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's funny. <laughs> Let me feel your head, old Hitler. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I can feel it now. Yeah. Here. yeah, yeah. Why don't you come down here come between this closer. lap? Let me yeah. feel that hair. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that mustache feel good, man. Oh, you're gonna be chancellor. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be chancellor. <laughs> I can feel the oh. fur coming now. Atta boy. Atta boy. <laughs> so he felt the bumps on Hitler's head. Yeah, he did. And he sank into a trance. I bet you he did. I bet you he was in a trance, oh, buddy. Trancing. Yeah, he was trancing. Hitler's down there on the floor. Yeah, Hitler. That's right. Oh, oh that's good, buddy. That yeah. Was, that, oh. Is that the word they use for it in Germany? A trance? Come over here and give me some trance, baby. This <laughs> <Some> trance. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get that trance job. Let me get that trance job right now, man. <laughs> So the words he spoke during this filled the Fuhrer with elation. I bet you did. Oh, hell yeah. I bet you he filled him with all kinds of elation. <laughs> oh, elation was fucking spraying all over the place. That room was just overflowed. With elation. Oh. <laughs> just piles and mounds of oh. it. Oh. Plenty of excess elation. So. <laughs> Hussan, dude, I swear to God, I'm not trying to. Not trying to make this any worse than it is, but I gotta say this next line. So, what Hussan said to Hitler was, I see victory in you. <laughs> <laughs> and it cannot be stopped. <laughs> oh, God. It sounds, like, it sounds like the plot of a gay fucking porno movie, dude. <laughs> They're in a hotel room, all alone. He's feeling the bumps on his head. He's, He's in, in a trance. deep mystical trance. I feel the victory in you. I'm about to fill him up with elation. <laughs> bow, yeah. chicka, bow, bow. <laughs> I see the victory, and it cannot be stopped, Hitler. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> Jesus Christ. And then in the background you hear playing, I'm coming out. <laughs> I'm coming out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so by Anyway, the, Hitler was <laughs> blowing off yes, his song. Yes. So by the end of the month, after this, Hitler had uh, cut a deal with his enemies and became head of the coalition government. So, again... Is this guy a con man? It, again, that's two for two, bud. That that sounds pretty accurate yeah. to me. He already knew. Um, so Hussan's visions had given him hope in his hour of uncertainty. One can only uh, wonder the intensity of his rage if uh, the raving anti-Semite had known at the time that the man he had adopted as his personal soothsayer um, the mystic who had just run his hands through uh, Hitler's Aryan locks. <laughs> See, I, and I thought Aryans were like blonde hair, blue eye. Well, which Hitler wasn't. Yeah, Hitler was Austrian. So yeah, yeah, whatever. Not all Aryans are blonde hair, blue eyed. Okay. Clearly, I got you. Aryan is again. That's a race, so I guess there are some that have dark hair. But, um, how pissed off would he have been if he knew that he was a Jew? See, he, he, oh, he didn't, didn't know. No, he didn't oh, know. Oh, wow. Okay, I, did, I thought he knew. No. Oh, wow. 
See, Husan started life as Herman Steinschneider with a birth certificate that read Hebrew male. Oh, wow. Mm Mm-hmm. And see, yeah, so he had a German name when Hitler knew him. So Hitler didn't know that he had been born Hebrew. Damn. That he was a Jew by birth. That's crazy. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Ballsy. Literally. <laughs> um, the fascinating tale is one familiar to many Germans, but completely unknown to Americans. So anyways, Americans didn't know, don't know a lot about this, but... It, it's funny because it's like Hitler's favorite person, his soothsayer, his right hand man, um, was a Jewish person. And if Hitler had known of that, he would have killed him as fast as he could. I mean, immediately. Right. But see, it's not much later that Hussein was actually disposed of. After the uh, Rishtag fire, everything changed. The burning of the Rishtag on February 27, 1933, for which we talked about, you know, they blamed the communists, mm-hmm. um, and paved the way to Hitler's power. Um, earlier, eerily, the day before, I, I fucked up again, by the way, I said earlier, eerily is what I meant to say. You but they were, both, they were both words, so we're going to let that one slide. We'll all let right? slide. Yeah. So eerily, the day before, Hussan had predicted the event through a medium during the opening soiree of his newly minted pagan temple, the Palace of the Occult. Um, There in the presence of Nazi officials and assorted VIPs, the seer claimed to see a great house in flames during a seance in his sanctuary. The Room of Glass was a sanctuary, and that's where he saw this. So hours later, the rich tag was engulfed um, in flames. Um, so, a lot of people ask, was Husan responsible or had a part in setting the fire? Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So, he had, even though he was Jewish, he had really close ties to the Nazi party. Um, He had lent hundreds of thousands of marks to high-ranking leaders of the Nazis. Um, He had befriended Count Wolf uh, Henrik von Heldorf, uh, the commander of Berlin's SA, and referred to Hitler as his pal Adolf. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Good pal. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so they don't know still. Um, if he had something to do with all of this, but there were a lot of reasons that the Nazis wanted Hussan dead. Actually, Goebbels and Goering both saw him as an interloper, a potential rival, rival. Riverer. Riverer. There's a shot. Shot, 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 shot. shot. Everybody! Take a shot. Okay. But, (laughs) they saw him as a potential rival for Hitler's affections and attentions. Ah. And, um... They should fucking have been scared, because he was a rival. Hitler blew him off. Also, Hussan had taken a lot of IOUs from all the money he lent to the Nazi officials. So they owed Hussan a lot of money that they were lending. Money, he also, they, money they wouldn't have to pay back if he would end up knocked off, huh? He also had film footage of SA member, top members involved in homosexual orgies. Well, there's no surprise there. <laughs> But more than anything, they found out that he was Jewish. And that made him a liability. The communist press had long published reports that Husan was Jewish, but it wasn't until the Rush Tag fire bequeathed totalitarian power to the Nazis and allowed them to eliminate the communists as a threat that they had time to focus on Husan's bloodline. Husan's time was up and he knew it. In a massive written, in a missive written in invisible ink, he informed a colleague 
I've always thought that this business about the Jews was just an election trick of theirs. It wasn't. On the morning of March 25th, 1933, Hussan was arrested by the SA and summarily executed. His lifeless body was left in a field on the outskirts of Berlin. Wow. Right. That's crazy, man. So, yeah, because they, uh, well, for a lot of reasons, but, I mean, look, it's like we said about Epstein. You can't have information about top leading officials and expect to live. It's right. not going to happen, buddy. No. No. No, it's, it's like yeah, not going like to happen. Being witness to a murder or something. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You just happen to stumble across it. You witness it. The murderer or murderers catch you witness it. They have to kill you. Right, yeah. I mean, just immediately. Bro. Oh, pardon me. I just burped. <laughs> Okay, so where are we? We talked about who's on there. Who's but like on. I was telling you earlier, that's not the only time that uh, Hitler was duped. That uh, in one of the in a Nazi magazine, there mm-hmm. was a, they had a contest, and they were trying to find the perfect Aryan baby, mm-hmm. right, to put on the cover of this magazine. And the the photo they chose out of hundreds, if not thousands, of photos. Turned out to be a Jewish baby. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. So let's get into Nazi mind control. So, one of Hitler's main things was trying to control the minds of people. If he could figure out how to program people to do what he wanted them to do, he could win the war by default, basically. Mm -hmm. So... In the 30s and then into the 40s, uh, they used mass communication to uh, propagandize the war for mass control. Uh, <clears throat> one of the Nazis' most evil people ever made, and one of the evil geniuses of the Nazi party, was Joseph Goebbels. Now, again, we have talked about Joseph Goebbels. Um, he was a leading leading modern propagandist. Um, his basic propaganda to defeat the Communist Party was to present it as being evil and the Nazi Party as righteous without using any real rationale, logic, or facts. His theory, if you repeat a lie long enough, people will believe it, and you will even come to believe it yourself. Yep. He also said, the bigger the lie, the more it will be believed. Wow. And he said, there is no need for propaganda to be rich in intellectual content at all. Right. Goebbels was able to talk a Christian nation into justifying the murder of millions of people. (laughs) During the night of the long knives and shortly thereafter, when Hitler and Ernest Rahm murdered Goebbels' propaganda machine, or murdered the head of the SA. Okay. Goebbels' propaganda machine exposed his evil homosexual lifestyle, which they had known about for years, and had kept it covered up because he he had previously benefited them. So, at this time, they used Goebbels to tell a bunch of lies. And then as soon as they were done with him, they exposed his homosexual lifestyle and threw him to the fucking wolves, dude. Right. So, (laughs) that leads us right into, um, a little bit into Operation Paperclip. You want to talk about Operation Paperclip? Yeah. So, Paperclip basically is World War II was... Not America and the Allies going in and just dropping bombs and blowing up Germany and killing everybody. No. No. To me, it was more like a deal was struck. Mm-hmm. Right? We're, uh, America is going to be basically the Third Reich. We're going to be the Roman Empire. Not you guys. In exchange, all your top people, Right? All your top scientists, all your bigwigs, we're going to take them. And you're going to come to America, 
be pardoned for all your fucking atrocities, and you're going to work for us. Because the Nazis were fucking brilliant. Somehow, I mean, they, they were on the cutting edge of all the technology that we have today. They were on the cutting edge of it then. Mm-hmm. Right? All the... They... I mean... They had anti-aircraft. They had possible time travel machines. Like, these guys weren't no fucking joke. Mm-hmm. In the fall of 1944, the United States and its allies launched a secret mission code named Operation Paperclip. The aim was to find and preserve German weapons, including biological and chemical agents, but American scientific intelligence officers quickly realized the weapons themselves were not enough. Uh, more than 1,600 German scientists, engineers, and technicians were taken from the former Nazi Germany to the U.S. for government employment after the end of World War II in Europe between 45 and 59. This was conducted by the Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency, or the JIOA. This was largely carried out by special agents of the U.S. Army's Counterintelligence Corps. Many of these personnel were former members, and some were former leaders of the Nazi Party. In 45, Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force set up T-Force, or Special Section Subdivision, which grew to over 2,000 personnel by June. T-Force examined 5,000 German targets, with a high priority on synthetic rubber, oil catalysts, new designs and armored equipment, V-2 rocket weapons, jet and rocket-propelled aircraft, naval equipment, field radios, secret writing chemicals, aeromedicine research, gliders, and scientific and industrial personalities. When large numbers of German sci- scientists began to be discovered in late April, Special Section Subdivision set up the Enemy Personnel Exploitation Section to manage and interrogate them. The Enemy Personnel Exploitation Section established a, de- a detention center, first in Paris and later then in the Kranzberg Castle outside of Frankfurt, Germany. The U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff established the first secret recruitment program called Operation Overcast on July 20th, 1945, initially to assist in shortening the Japanese war and to aid our post-war military research. The term Overcast was the name first given by the German scientists' family members for the housing camp where they were held in Bavaria. So basically, yeah. Basically, we go in, in World War II, we go in and start gathering up all these uh, high officials and all the best scientists and all the best military and basically all the best minds Mm -hmm. in uh, in Nazi Germany. These Mm -hmm. are Nazis. Gathered them up, right, and brought them here. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's who, you, and that's who you have. Run, that's who was running NASA. That's how NASA gets started. Is by Nazis. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Well, not only that. Have you ever heard of Project Monarch? No. Project Monarch was how it started, and uh, much of the preliminary experimentation was concerning genetic engineering and behavior modification and was conducted by a Nazi scientist, Joseph Mingel, at Auschwitz in Germany, where he coldly analyzed the effects of trauma bonding, eye-collaring, and twinning upon his victims. Besides the insidious surgical experimentation, performed at the concentration camp. Many of the children, children, 
were subjected to massive amounts of electroshock to alter their brain waves. Mm. And sadly, many of them did not survive this brutality. He also would cut open their brains while they were alive and apply electrodes to their brains to see how it would affect them. Wow. Well, see, like, uh, like MK Ultra, the mind control program ran in the United States, was being ran by Nazis. Yeah. But see, that we're getting to that. So brainwashing was also being carried out on the inmates of Dachau, who were placed under hypnosis and given hallucinogenic drugs like LSD and mescaline. Wow. During the war, parallel behavioral research was led by George Easterbrooks of Colgate University. His involvement with the Army, CID, and the FBI and other agencies remains to this day shrouded in secrecy. However, Easterbrooks would be occasionally slip and discuss his work involving the creation of a hypno-programmed couriers and hypnotically induced split personalities in people. Hmm. So after WW2, the U.S. Department of Defense secretly imported many of the top German Nazi and Italian fascist scientists and spies into the United States via South America and the Vatican. The code name for this operation wow. was Project Paperclip. Oh, okay, Paperclip. Okay, gotcha. See, that was the other thing was the Nazis. They were, they were dabbling in, you know, LSD, mescaline, but like, uh, all of it trying to give their soldiers an advantage, right? Yes. They also created crystal meth. Yes, they did. To keep their soldiers awake. In Nazi Germany, they sold crystal meth over the counter. Yeah, they would give it to them in their rations to keep them awake. They were selling it over the counter in pharmacies. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, one of the more prominent finds for the U.S. was German General Renard Galen, who was Hitler's chief of intelligence against Russia. Just real quick, if anybody that don't believe us, you can literally go to Wikipedia. Oh, yeah, and look click, all this up. Click on key recruits. Mm-hmm. Look at this list, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's hundreds of them. It's freaking nuts. Yeah. So, upon arriving in Washington, D.C., again, this is Hitler's chief of intelligence against Germany. One of the highest ranking officials in the Nazi party Right during WW2. So when he arrived in Washington in 1945, uh, he met extensively with President Truman, General William Donovan, Director of Office of Strategic Services, and Alan Dulles, who would later become the head of the CIA. The object of their brainstorming session was to reorganize the nominal American intelligence operation, transforming it into a highly efficient, covert organization. The culmination of their efforts produced the CIA. So Hitler's head of intelligence was the one who started our CIA. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. yeah and see, like, that's, that's my other thing. Like, everybody believes, and the story is, that Hitler was caught in a bunker, right, and mm-hmm. killed, or did he commit suicide, or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, he was... But I just find it hard to believe that all of these best people, all of the top minds, all of the... All of the people, 100% guilty and in charge of the murder of millions of people, they were all spared. They were all taken, and they were all saved. And I'm supposed to believe that Hitler wasn't? Yeah. It's rough. It's hard. It's tough. So they took this guy. But our government wouldn't right? lie to us. No. Not ours. Not ours. So they took this guy and the head of Hitler's mind control program, and they took them into the CIA, and then in the fall of 1947, they started uh, Project Chatter. And uh, Project Chatter was the use of truth drugs um, 
to try to get people to break their minds. Is this the one where they use like the prostitutes? Uh, okay. No, no, no. no. That's the, the beginning of MK Ultra. Okay, okay. This so is this right is pre- before MK Ultra. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The research focused on the identification and testing of such drugs for use in interrogations and recruitment of government agents. So the CIA then decided to expand their efforts in the area of behavior modification with the Project Bluebird. Bluebird. Yeah. And this was approved by the director of the CIA, who was also in the pocket of the head of the intelligence agency, Alan Dulles. So, he was the head of the CIA, and he was also the guy that had extensive meetings with Hitler's head of intelligence. So, they were buddies. Gotcha. And then Alan Dulles was running this program, Project Bluebird, in the 50s. Its objectives were to discover a means of conditioning personnel to prevent unauthorized extraction of information from them by known means. Investigation or investigate the possibility of controlling an individual by application of special interrogation techniques. Three, to investigate memory enhancement. And four, establish defensive means for preventing hostile control of any agency personnel. So basically, they were trying to brainwash the CIA agents to make them better uh, spies. Yeah. That's what they were doing. So in 51, Project Bluebird was named Artichoke. Mm Mm-hmm. Which was evaluating uh, offensive interrogation net techniques, including hypnosis and drugs. But this ceased in '56, and Artichoke became MK Ultra. Hmm. So, and the other thing that that they were doing was like Manchurian candidates, mm-hmm. right? Getting people to do evil things and then wiping their minds of even knowing they did it. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Okay, so. Why they named all of this Project Monarch, though, is all under the balloon of Project Monarch, is because it it refers to a butterfly. And they did that because when a person undergoes electroshock trauma, they get a feeling of lightheadedness, as if they're floating like a butterfly. (laughs) Are you fucking serious? Yeah. Yeah. So... (laughs) Oh, goodness but gracious. So much of what go, is going on in, in our society now, and so much of it not only can be attributed back to the Nazis, it's because most of it was was ran and started by the Nazis. Mm-hmm. The Nazis started this. The government took the Nazis top scientists that were doing this brainwashing and bring them over to do all of these other programs. Now, this is what they started doing with their spies and agents, and they succeeded. Okay? They would program the mind like a complex computer file. They would create it through trauma and repetition and reinforcement. And they would put triggers inside their mind to activate the file. A specific code word or password would be required. The victim is then called a slave by the handler, who in turn is perceived as the master or god. Wow. 75% of these were females. Since they per- possessed a holler t- holler higher, 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 the word's higher, take another shot, God higher. damn it. Uh, a higher tolerance for pain and tend to disassociate easier than males. Subject were main, subjects were mainly used for cover operations. Um, prostitution and pornography and involvement in the entertainment industry was notable in all subjects. So they used a lot of prostitutes for this. So yeah, and entertain and celebrities. Right. But in the big picture, 
These people were from all walks of life, from bums on the streets to white collar guys. Um, a retired CIA agent vaguely discussed the use of such personnel to be used as plants or chameleons for the purpose of infiltrating designated groups, gathering information, taking out enemies, or injecting themselves for ulterior agendas. So they were taking people off the streets, programming them, and then sticking them back on the streets, and all they had to do was call them up, give them the code word, and they were instantly initiated to do whatever assignment they wanted, wanted them, to, them do. to do. And one of the, well, probably the most famous person that everybody would know that was involved in this and was under MK Ultra was Charles Manson. Mm -hmm. it's, exact, it's, a, it's a perfect example. Um, there is an inordinate amount of alters or altered personalities in the victims also with numerous backup programs, mirrors, and shadows. There would be a light side or a good personality and a dark side or a bad personality or alter interwoven into the mind that could rotate on its axis. Wow. Jesus. That's crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you Jesus. this. I've done, I've done, I did acid one time. And it, I'll tell you this. It, it literally is like a truth serum. Mm -hmm. I know that. that. When I took it, like it was like the... One of the first things I noticed when I started feeling the high coming on mm -hmm. was like, fuck, dude, I'd tell the truth about anything right now. Yeah, and it's amazing that people don't realize that this information is out there, that our government did this to people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's 100% out there. Yeah. But nobody cares to look. Right. And then even if they look or you tell them, they don't care. So the Nazis were not only investigating paranormal activity, but they were investigating mind control and refined it to the point that our government took it over and actually made Manchurian candidates out of it. Right. No, I mean, right. the, Nazi, the Nazi regime and the Nazi philosophy, it, it wasn't ended in World no. War II. It was simply transferred. It was adopted by our government. Right. And and not only our government, but Russia. Oh, yeah. Like, we got like 1,600. Mm -hmm. And Russia took probably that many, at least, if not more, right. went to Russia. Right. We split them right down split the middle. Them. And they took the best scientists. We took the best scientists. We split them like playing cards, and then we used them because they had initiated the programs that we wanted to start using on our own people. Correct. And that's fine. That's cool because that's all done in the good nation. Yeah. It's fine to program people yeah. off the street. Well, that's like uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Yep. Said he had no yep. memory of shooting Kennedy. Also, the other guy that shot the Robert. Ruby. Well, no. Yeah, Ruby. Too. Ruby said he had no memory of shooting Oswald. Who shot Robert Kennedy? Yeah, yeah. He had no memory of killing Sir Robert. Sir Han. Yeah. Had no memory of it. These, I mean, these guys were clearly under some kind of... Hypnosis. Hypnosis of, right. of brain control, or mind control. Right. Somebody fucked with their brain some way, somehow. Well, the guy who tried to kill Reagan. Yeah. He said that every time he read Catcher in the Rye, yeah, yeah. or saw the book, it triggered something in him, and something in his mind told him he had to kill Ronald Reagan. Every time he looked at the book. It's crazy, dude. Why? That sounds like exactly what I just read. That sounds exactly. like a trigger word. 100% right. Right. You programmed that man to kill Ronald Reagan. It just didn't succeed. But yeah, Robert Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, all these were spies sent by our government to do a job. Yeah, because if you're a head government official, right, obviously you can't shoot the fucking president in the head. No. What would be the best way of going about it? Mm -hmm. Right, fighting some dipshit that you don't, you or nobody else gives a shit about, brainwash them into doing it, then brainwash them again into not remembering it at all. Well, that's what's funny about Oswald. So not only not only did you not have to kill him, but got him killed. You got him killed by somebody that has no fucking memory of right. how or who right. or why or what. Yeah, it's brilliant. Well, that's like Oswald. Think about it. The CIA took Oswald and sent him to Russia. Yep. 
for a mission. And then Oswald was mysteriously, quote unquote, yeah. missing in Russia for a while. No one knew where he was. Yeah. Then he comes back yeah. and all of a sudden, through no provocation whatsoever, kills Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. For no reason. This dude that's masterminding the fucking assassination of the, the United States president, nobody knows where he's at. Right. And okay. comes over here and kills Kennedy for no reason whatsoever. Been in Russia for years at this yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Where they legally are still doing mind control experiments. Right. Right. But I'm sure our government didn't send him over there for a mind control well, experiment. Yeah, no, no. He, was doing he was just most he obviously was just roaming around. Roman. Couldn't find Didn't him. know where he was. No clue. We have no idea. We ended mind control in the fifties. If we could have found him then, we could have stopped this horrible tragedy. Yeah, we ended it in the 50s. We don't know what you're talking about. We had nothing to do with it. Yeah, we ain't done that shit since Artichoke, bro. No, no. We gave that shit up. Right. Yeah. But it's funny, it's humorous to me that our government took clearly something that was horrible in society. And American people sit here and go... Oh, the Nazis were horrible. How could they experiment on people? This and that. Yeah. And we took all their best scientists, the people that were experimenting on people, bring them over here and put them to work doing the exact same thing. Yeah, not just experimenting people. They were fucking gassing people. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Children. That's what the Nazis were doing. Uh, yeah. And then we bring them over here and grab prostitutes, people of lower life that we don't care about, that aren't going to be missed, and we do the exact same yeah, thing. Right. But that's okay because they were hookers. Well, and well, and we just don't do it. We just weren't doing it openly. Like, openly and yeah, right. But really, which is better, to say I'm a piece exactly. of shit or to lie about being a piece of shit? Exactly. Either way, you're a piece of shit. Right. Right. You're still doing horrible things. You're just making it look like in society that you're good, when really you're just as trashy as the Nazis. <laughs> I mean. Truman, You're the Nazis. Truman sitting down, our president was sitting down, having a meeting with the head of intelligence for the Nazi party. The head guy who was okaying all these experiments yeah, yeah. and all these things that went on. And he's sitting there having a coffee with the motherfucker. It's cool. Yep. It's cool that you tortured and killed and millions most, of people. Most of them were on trial for war crimes and were... Acquitted. Of course they were, because we need them. Yep. Anytime we need them, they're acquitted. Hell, the atomic bomb and nuclear power plants, all invented by Nazi scientists. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's that's yeah. why we were. That's why what had we had to do what we had to do, which was basically adopt them as our own, or they would have fucking. Or we would all be speaking German right now. Yeah. Because they had all the best minds mm -hmm. and all the technology. Oh, yeah. And we knew it, and Russia knew it. Yeah. And that's why we took them on. But anyways, this is our episode about, the last episode about the Nazis and psychics and all their paranormal stuff that they did. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we will see you next time. Later.